Oh. Oh. I just wanted to talk about this real quick because I'm highly disappointed the movie didn't cover this because I think it contextualizes everything we see happen with Tell. All I want to do is give you guys a quick article. And all I'm going to do is take a look at three paragraphs here and I'm going to go ahead and bounce because this is this pisses me off to no end because this ritual continually gets repeated and imposed. And it's ironic because I hear a lot of the same energy animating the protest against SYSBM and divestors claiming to use the same language against black men doing this. Fear of Negro rule and fear of white genetic annihilation. Shout out to Francis Cress Welsing. But let me start here and I'll put a link in the chat for you guys. It says Emmett, Phil, Emmett Till's father was named Lewis Till. According to author John Edgar Wideman, Lewis Till was in the army during World War II. At that time, the military was segregated. While he was not in combat, he served in a port battalion where he and the rest of his predominantly black unit had to move supplies. He and another black man, Fred McMurray, were convicted by an army court martial of sexually assaulting two white women and killing another. Weidman does not believe the two of them were given a fair trial. After all, after what happened to Lewis Till's son, it's a very spooky coincidence. Gail Lament Buckley of the New York Times says it was an, it claims Lewis Till was a quote, abusive husband who did not really know his son, end quote. Again, the propaganda BS continues. Records seem to be sparse and unavailable until the time Mammy Till, Lewis Till's husband, and Emmett Till's father. They were unavailable until the lynching of Emmett Till, where Weidemann says the confidential military records were leaked to the press during the trial of Emmett Till's killers, a completely sham trial. Till's killers were acquitted by the entire white jury. Professors David Hook, Hooks and Matthew, Matthew Grindy state, Lewis Till was a rhetorical pawn in, a bigger, pol in bigger political battles, including between the North, South, Black and White, and the NAACP and many citizens councils in the South some Northern newspapers applauded the military service of Lewis Till. However, and this is where it gets ridiculous. However, after news of how Lewis Till died was revealed to the public, many defenders of Emmett Till's murderers used Lewis Till's case to justify the younger Till's murderer. They didn't talk about this in the movie, fam? Bro, I want one word about that. Wow. The crudest of defenders exploited Lewis Till's death and believe it was a case of, quote, like father, like son. <laughs> Two Mississippi senators in 1955, James Eastland and John Steinen looked into great detail at the military files. Before the two leaked information to manipulate public opinion on Till's murder, very few people knew anything about Lewis Till besides him being the owner of a ring of Emmett Till's body. Mammy Till received a letter in 1945 that her husband, quote, died of willful misconduct. And when she tried to investigate the death three years later, she couldn't find any information. When Lewis Till died, he and his wife were separated. It was not a happy marriage. Mammy Till once received a restraining order on her husband. When he violated the order, he was given a choice, enlist in the army or go to jail, at which point he enlisted in 1943. Now listen to this bullshit. Lewis Till's execution order was signed by none other than General D. White Eisenhower. D. White Man Eisenhower. He was found guilty of sexual assault and murder in Leghorn, Italy on February 17, 1945. He was allegedly to have killed Anna Zanchik or Zanchi and sexually assaulted Benny Lucrezia and Frida Mari the, end of the, the year earlier. Till was executed on July 2nd, 1945, and buried in a military cemetery in France. It's impossible to separate the news of Emmett Till's lynching, Lewis Till's death, racial tensions in the South, in 1955. And I'll leave the rest of the article for you guys to take a look at. But, <laughs> fam, how do you skip out a detail like this? when the entire movie is being framed off this idea and energy of here's a single black woman doing what she can to raise her son and then in in comes white supremacy. 
But then the only mention of black men supporting a role is either as a sacrifice, a target of death, or supporting a low-key passive-aggressive narrative of the father not being there. Are you kidding me? I mean, has it been a month since, since the Woman King came out yet, Roger? Man, I don't even know what to say about this. I had no idea Fam. this was going on in the background. And let me just go ahead and finish the combo so I can go back to my training. This is this is goofy. Look, y'all know she confessed to lying about this shit, right? Well, you know, the, the book got to come out to make it official, though, you know. Carolyn Brandt. Like, y'all know she admitted that, though, right? I'm just I'm, I'm just sure she did. Okay, I just want y'all to know this little article. You guys can keep on your records for that because I'm sure this whenever you're dealing with these goofy folks on Twitter or whatever you go. Yeah, we need to be talking about this boy father. And how again this is the setup for the formula we have seen ad nauseum. And every time you hear a SYSBM argument or some motherfuckers come repelling from the ceiling from the FUBU Inc. military defense force. This is what you need to put forward because it's the same goofy argument over and over and over again. We've been covering this ad nauseum on Gigi's channel, me and Sandog, showing how ultimately what this boils down to is the fear of Negro rule. Everybody else gets to look at men in the position of the context of a civilian as a, as a citizen rather, being that the role of the man within society is to protect the women and children, ultimately. And laws are written.